Good morning, everybody. Uh, Heather Donlevy, I'm the Digital Sales Manager here at Cumulus Harrisburg. And uh, thank you for your time. We appreciate that you're joining us. We're really excited to talk to you about our local look back program. It's a new digital targeting tactic that um, we think is pretty interesting and probably different from maybe what you've heard of in the past. So I have Rob Lewis here on the call from our digital team. He's one of our digital experts and he's gonna review it with you. I wanna start off saying that I realize, we all realize that not everyone on this call is a digital expert. Uh, we're gonna be talking about a digital product. And so I hopefully am going to do it in a way that's very, very, very simple. So everyone can understand here. Um, well, very, very simple in a way where I hope everyone can understand. And as soon as I unfreeze my screen here, I'm gonna say, well, my friend Al here, he said, if you can't explain something simply, then you don't understand it well enough. So hopefully I understand what I'm talking about just a little bit so I can explain it in a way that's very simple. So with that being said, in today's world, uh, the year 2020, it's gonna go down in the history books. This one we will never forget. Uh, a lot of things have happened in this year, especially on how we do business. So because of the pandemic and because of really so many various things that have happened, you've had to adjust to and adapt to how you do business because the world around us has changed so dramatically. So actually what I want to talk about here is my friend Charles Darwin said, it's not the strongest that survive, it's not the most intelligent that survive, it's the one that is the most adaptable to change. So this goes for business hands down. So I wanna give you two quick examples of businesses, one business that adapted to their environment and they are flourishing, and another one that, that did not and they are not flourishing. So uh, we all remember way back when Netflix didn't do streaming, they actually mailed you a DVD. And back then it's when you'd go down to the video store and rent and you'd have those late fees if you didn't get it back in time like the next day. And so this was like a game changer, but Netflix saw that the way that we wanted to view movies was changing from DVDs to streaming. And they jumped on that bandwagon. They completely adapted how they did business and they are flourishing. They're, they're doing very, very well right now. And uh, I, I can only anticipate them doing even better. So on the other hand though, let's look at a company that did not adapt to their environment. So if you're over the age of, I don't know, 25, maybe 30, uh, you remember Blockbuster Video back in 2004, they were the number one video retailer on the planet with over 9,000 locations. Well, we're gonna fast forward six years and this was the time between those 2004, 2010 when streaming was really picking up speed. And Blockbuster, they missed that boat. They tried later to adapt and it just didn't work. And here today, if you were to say, hey, hey Google, uh, Blockbuster near me, you'd find one on the entire planet. One, it's in Bend, Oregon. So if you're making a road trip up to Oregon, please stop by, get your picture taken outside the last Blockbuster on earth. Um, they just, they missed that boat. So adapting to your environment. Digital is where everyone's attention is at. So I'm holding my, Oh, hey Google, stop. <laughs> it heard me say, hey Google. Um, everyone's got a phone in their hand, a phone, a tablet, a computer, and that's where their attention's at sometimes hours and hours a day. So if you're not advertising on one of these devices, you are missing out on a huge, huge opportunity. So I want to show you an example of what I mean. So on your screen, you're gonna see a picture that was taken back in 2005 outside the Sistine Chapel for the inauguration of Pope Benedict. Now, if I may, draw your attention to the bottom right-hand corner of the screen where you see a gentleman or, uh, I don't know if it's a male or female, holding a flip phone. Well, you remember, this is two years before the uh, iPhone came out with the whole touch screen, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a photo eight years later at the exact same location, this time for the inauguration of Pope Francis, and you're gonna notice that the image looks a little bit different. This is just one example of people's attentions on there. So what I'm gonna talk about today is one of our many, many products that we have available. We are a full service digital company. I'm talking about one of many products that we have. And at the end, I'm actually going to briefly explain other products that we may have that will work with this, this product. So in today's world, we've got a challenge. I mean, today, like 2020, you know, right? Almost September of 2020. So right here, I have this handy dandy marker. Uh, how we do business, come on. How we do business is a, is a little bit different. Oh, one second here. Got a mute everyone. All right, and then the way that we do business could be significantly different than how you ran your business, even say, let's say March of this year, like pre-pandemic. So 
Maybe right now your hours of operation are different. Maybe your the responsibilities of some of your employees are completely different. Your product, your services are different. How we do business is different. But now that we're mostly all open, right? Everyone's out there doing social distancing, wearing your mask. It's actually, it's weird. If you see someone not wearing a mask, you're kind of like, what are they doing? It's so bizarre, and for me at least. So, but now that we're back open, it's like, hey, how do we reach back to our previous customers and clients to let them know we're open and you want to advertise to them to get them back into your store, right? Not only your location, but also your competitor's location. Okay, well, that's where Cumulus comes in. We've got a solution for everybody. And the solution is called Local Look Back. Now, Local Look Back is a geofencing campaign that I will explain to you, those on the call who may not be terribly familiar with what a geofence is, I'll explain that to you in a very simple way. But what we're able to do is we put a geofence around your location or locations, if you have more than one, as well as all of your competitors in the area. And what we do is instead of turning that geofence on and then starting today, moving forward, you know, capturing those device IDs and, and serving ads to them then, we can look all the way back to January of 2019. So we put a geofence around your store, your competitors, and we look back in time to when clients were in your store. So from January 2019 up until today, that's about 19 months. So this timeline is 19 months. And what we can do is in those 19 months right here, you see that we geofence your locations, your competitors' locations, and any other relevant locations to have an audience that you may not be aware of. And we really can have as many of these geofences as we want. The next thing I want to point out is on that 19 month timeline, you can actually target up to 120 days along that timeline here. So I'm gonna draw this back on here just to make this sense because some people get confused like, oh, I thought 120 days looking back, I thought we can go back to January 2019. You can, so here's your 19 month timeline. And let's say for example, you wanna look back 120 days between, uh, I don't know, let's say February, February, March, April, and then like May, like here, like right. It's just, oh wait, that's, that's 2020. So it'd be like May, like right in here, okay? So you have 120 days. Now you don't have to look back 120 days. You can actually look back less if you want. So three months, two months, one month, a weekend if you want, maybe a convention. But you can look up to 120 days anywhere on that timeline. And, and so I, I hope that makes sense. So. Next slide is for those of you who may not be uh, familiar with a geofence. This is what a geofence looks like. We can draw it around really any location there. And how it normally works is when we turn it on and a device enters that location, just like this, then the geofence does everything it can to capture that device ID so it can start serving ads to that device for the sheer fact that it went into that geofence. But with local look back, we don't turn it on and look forward and we turn it on and we look back in time to, again, all the way back to 2019 to reach your previous customers and clients that came into your location. Now here's the kicker. With local look back, once we capture that device ID, we can connect that device to a real person. We know their name, we know their email address, we even know their postal address or where they live. And that information is going to be very valuable here uh, moving forward to when I explain how this all works. So it's important to know that it's not just a device. We know who these people are. And we use this information to target them with your ads moving forward. Okay? So how does it work? First step, like I said, give us those locations. Your location, all your competitors' locations. And then once we have those locations, we go to step two, which is when do you want us to look back? All the way back to 2019. Let's say, for example, I like to use the example of Christmas time, the holiday. Believe it or not, September is next week, and then after that, we have we have Halloween, we have Thanksgiving, we have Christmas. Holidays are coming up, and so what you can do is we can reach back to the holiday season last year. Let's say November, December of 2019, and we can look to say, hey, who came into your business? and you're all of your competitors' business, and we're gonna build an audience of those people to start serving ads to them today moving forward. That's just an example, right? 
So the question is, hey, once we have that audience, where are you going to serve those ads? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about right now with some di different digital platforms that we can actually serve them on. First thing about that audience that I was talking about, we wanted to make sure that we have enough people to serve your ads to. So we want to make sure it's about a thousand people at minimum thousand people. We can do more for sure, but we want to make sure we have a, a good size audience. Now, once we have that relevant good size audience, then this is where you choose on where you serve those ads to your clients. Let's talk about each, each of these one at a time. So display, a display campaign is right here. That's where you go to all those millions of websites and mobile apps that allow for those banner ads. So a display campaign is awesome. It's an awesome platform for branding and awareness. You're gonna be showing something to somebody possibly for the very first time, they weren't looking for it, so chances of them clicking on it is slim the first time they see it. So we want to reach them frequently, okay? Reach and frequency is important here because after I see an ad two, three, four, five times or more, I'm, I'm like, hey, I've seen that ad, I've had time to think about it, and I will click on it if I'm ever going to click on it after I see it multiple times. So that's a display campaign, let me erase that. Facebook, on the other hand, uh, Facebook is a social media platform, number one in the world, couple billion people. And so as you, uh, I'm assuming everyone on this call has a Facebook account. So when you're going through your news feed, occasionally you will come into a sponsored ad. It looks just like a post from your family or friends, but it says sponsored underneath there. And they're, they're trying to market something to you, a product, a service, something's going on. Again, this is for branding and awareness. Like, so you weren't necessarily looking for that, but you're being targeted for some reason. But here's the kicker. Um, with Facebook, it's not just in your news feed that you see that ad. You see it everywhere, uh, wherever you go inside of Facebook. You can go in stories and stream and marketplace. You can see those ads and we're targeting that group of people. Now here, these last three, local video, blended OTT and pure OTT, I'm gonna talk about those one at a time really quick, but I want to point it out that those are video, video platforms. So if you have ever marketed a video, if you have a video, if you've ever thought about creating, producing and marketing a video, here's your opportunity. So I'm gonna talk about those one at a time right now. Local video, another name for this is pre-roll. I'm sure you've heard that term pre-roll. It's, it's on a number of different marketing platforms where you want to watch a video and you click on the video and right before that video plays, you see another video ad, maybe a short one, five seconds, 15, 30 seconds. Sometimes you can skip it. Sometimes you can't. You can click on it and be taken to their website. You can engage with that video ad. So here's one example right here of I went to CNN this was last year, of course, when Tiger Woods won the, the Masters, and he was getting the Presidential Medal of Freedom. So I clicked on that video, and right before that video played, I got an ad right here. Now, if I wanted to, I could engage with that ad. I can click on it. I can go to their website, whatever it is. So that's the video pre-roll. I actually want to show you an example. This is something that happened to me less than a week ago. It was earlier this week where I took a screenshot because I was like, hey, I want to show this on my presentation. I was on WebMD. I was looking up a hormone and I saw this local video ad. Let's see if it's going to work. Nope, it's not going to play. But here's a local video. It's right in the middle of my, my content that I was reading. And I was like, hey, that is a perfect example of a local video right there, okay? So next we're gonna talk about, I hope my computer didn't freeze because I was trying, okay, good. Uh, next I'm gonna talk about OTT. So OTT stands for over the top. It's one of these little devices, there's a couple dozen of them, like an Apple TV, a Roku, a Amazon Fire Stick, uh, that you plug into a normal TV and it turns that TV into what's called a connected television. All it does is it, connects your television to the internet so now you can come over here and watch your favorite show um, and during your favorite show you often get served a video ad now with this a video ad you're sitting on your couch watching this you see the ad well you can't skip it and you definitely can't walk up and click on it unless you have a touch screen television which you know I don't I don't know too many people that do that have it in their house but you can 
pull out your phone that's sitting next to you on the couch or your tablet or your laptop, and you can start researching the ad that you're seeing on there. But here's the thing. We are a digital company. We love data. And this is like, hey, people can't engage with the ad, which means we're, we're, we're not able to provide our client with as much data as we want to. So how can we fix this? And this is what we came up with. We are going to take OTT and local video, and we're going to blend those together. We're going to marry those together, targeting the same people on two different platforms. Let me give you an example of this. Let's say tonight you're sitting on your couch, you're watching your favorite show on, let's say, NBC app, and you're watching American Idol, and you see an ad. Let's say that ad is for, uh, I always like to use the example of Baskin Robbins ice cream. Well, you can't click on it, you can't skip it, you can definitely pull out your phone and say, hey, you know, Labor Day is coming up, they're offering this great sale on ice cream cakes, or buy one, get one free, or whatever, and so I want to check that out. Well, tomorrow morning, you go on your computer or your mobile phone and you want to see how the hurricanes go, uh, those two different hurricanes that's happening, you know, Hurricane Laura and whatnot. And before you watch that video of the newscaster standing on the beach with the rain in their face, you see a video ad for Baskin Robbins ice cream. Well, now that you're on your computer or your laptop, you can actually click on it. You can get taken to the Baskin Robbins website. You can sign up for that newsletter. You can, you know, uh, make a purchase, whatever it is, find out their location, whatever it is that you want so you can engage with it, which means more data. And we love that. But chances are, last night when I saw it, I, I may not have necessarily clicked on it because it was the first time I saw it and I wasn't necessarily looking for it. But the second time I saw it, I was like, hey, I saw that last night. I, I was interested last night. I just didn't do anything about it. Now I can do something about it, okay? So now let's talk about finding your audience. So there's two different ways that we can actually locate your, your audience. So uh, there's a lot of information on this screen. So I'm actually going to uh, have you look where I want you to look. So as soon as my screen will update, there we go. So the first thing is the philosophy of what I've talked about before. We're going to geofence your location and all of your competitors or your direct and indirect. So indirect basically means the, that relevant audience that you may not be aware of. So once we have that, then I, we, our, our targeting quality is basically, it's even though the size of that uh, audience is important, we wanna make sure we geofence the best places to have make sure that we're targeting people who are interested in what you're offering. Now, building that list of competitors, direct and indirect and relevant audiences, you may need a little bit of help. And that's where we step up to the plate. We can do some research for you and help you complete that list. So option A is you don't need any help. You've got this. You know of all your competitors. Option B is, ah, uh, you know some. Maybe it's an incomplete list. And so we step up. We do some research. We help you complete that list. The third one is you need a lot of help. And that's when we step it up even more and we do even more research and we'll create a list for you. No problem doing that. We're, we're, uh, we're happy to help. Now, depending on these locations, uh, if how many people actually go to these locations. So right here, we have low foot traffic on one end and high foot traffic on the other. So if they're low foot traffic, we won't, we'll need more of them to make sure we have an audience large enough to serve your ads to. And some examples are right down here on the left. Now, high foot traffic, then obviously we won't need as many locations. Here's some examples down here on the right. And so again, it's just making sure we have enough uh, people in that audience to serve your ads to. Now that's the first one is where they shopped. The second one is maybe events that they attended. So as you know, in 2020, starting in March-ish area, uh, things were canceled, events were canceled. So, but remember, we're looking all the way back to January of 2019. So with that being said, we can do concerts, we can do churches, maybe around Easter or Christmas time. Uh, definitely sporting events, not a whole lot of those going on these, these days, but last year they were all going you know, full force. And then expos, conventions. Um, so if somebody went to these events, even if that event is three days, five days, seven days, we can do the geofencing and the local look back for that many days. Remember, we don't have to do 120 days. We can do uh, all, you know, as, as little as you want, but up to 120 days, okay? So if you decide to do a display campaign, 
then what we're going to do is we're going to start you out with your first set of creatives for free. Now, what you're looking on the screen are some creative examples of different businesses and in different industries that we've created. And yeah, as you can see, uh, the color, the image, the call to action button, the content, it's all relevant to businesses in that industry. Um, <clears throat> let me show you some different ones right here. Now, these ads are what are called static ads. Um, you actually have an option to do either of the static ad here, and we will create these for you from the ground up, and then you approve them before we ever use them in your campaign, or you can use, or we can build you what's called an HTML5 ad. Now, these are the ones that have that really cool animation, and it's not just a little GIF that does one thing just, you know, over and over. No, these have a lot more animation. Uh, they're not, uh, they're, they're more engaging. People love to see these compared to those little gifts. And people actually engage with these more than they do with static ads. So, I mean, kind of a little hint, if you want to do this with a display, I would recommend the HTML5 because the first one's on us. We're going to help you create those. Now, regardless of what package you buy, where you target, who you want to target, um, all of our campaigns are customized to you. We called it the holistic approach meaning we're gonna customize your campaign for your spend, your demographic who you wanna target, your geographical area in your industry, and we're gonna sit down and customize it to you to get you the best results to get people either through your front door, onto your website to sign up for that newsletter or whatever it is that you're trying to do. Now, I mentioned earlier that we are a full service digital company and today Local Look Back is just one of our many products that we offer if you're thinking to yourself, hey, local look back's awesome, but what if I want to do Google AdWords? Or what if I need some SEO work on my website? Or maybe I want to uh, advertise on YouTube specifically, or maybe I, I need to get my directories cleaned up. We offer all of these products. I could literally do spend 15, 20 minutes or longer on each one of these products, just like I did on local look back today. But, I, but local look back is a fairly new to us. It's a new technology. And I wanted to present it because we're seeing some huge, great success with it, and we wanted to offer it to you. And, and so the last thing I wanted just to bring up here is that each of your digital uh, campaigns, as the data comes rolling in, we put that in the form of a report. We can go over that report with you every single month. We can send that report to you so you can see exactly how your campaign is running. And May I add that digital campaigns, for the most part, perform better over time. So the longer you run a digital campaign with us, then the better it's gonna perform because what we're able to do is go in there and optimize your campaign. We're able to see the data coming in and, and see what's working, what needs some help, what's not working. Uh, we can get rid of things, we can beef things up, we can just do all kinds of things to your campaign to make it work better and better as the weeks and the months roll on, okay? I really appreciate everyone's time today.